Welcome to section 11.4. We're going to split this into two different parts. So the first thing we're going to talk about is limits at infinity. So it's the idea of we still want to be able to evaluate the limit, the whole idea of direct substitution. So I'm going to think about actually plugging in like a gigantic number if I'm going to positive infinity or if I'm going to negative infinity, plugging in like a little tiny number and just kind of seeing what the behavior of this is going to do. So if I take a look at this first one, I'm going to go ahead and break it into two pieces. So we can do limits of sums and differences separately. So you can just break them apart. So let's go ahead and separate this out. So we'll do the limit as x approaches infinity of the first value, which is that constant of 4, and then minus the limit as x approaches infinity of that second value, which is 3 over x squared. All right, so we know from previous sections that the limit at a constant, well, is just that constant. So this limit is still going to be 4. That hasn't changed. Now, if I take a look at the second one, the second one is going to give me 3 over a gigantic number. It's the biggest number I can think of, and then squaring it. So I'm going to get 3 over a huge number. So this is what I'm thinking. So I get 3 over this. Because I get this gigantic number in the bottom, we know that the larger the denominator, the smaller the fraction is going to be. So actually, this is going to get really super close to 0. So if I do that, then I'm going to get 4 minus something that's almost 0, if not really close to 0. And actually, that's going to give me 4. So my original question, the limit as x approaches infinity of that mess, it's actually just going to be 4. So when we're plugging in infinity, or the idea of plugging in infinity, we just want to see if we're going to go to a constant, so some number, or if it's going to completely blow up and become gigantic and therefore go off to infinity, or if when we plug it in, the idea of plugging it in, it becomes so tiny, tiny, tiny that it gets close to zero. So I'm going to do the same idea here. So I'm going to go ahead and split this apart. So let's go ahead and split this apart, and then uh, we'll start plugging in the idea of infinity. So with this idea of, of plugging in like the largest number I can possibly think of, I'm really just going to compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator just to see who blows up. So if it's they blow up at the same rate, then I'm going to be going to some actual like numeric value. If the top blows up much faster than the bottom, then I'm shooting off to infinity. Or if the bottom blows up so much faster than the top, then I'm going to be going to zero or getting really close to zero. So if I take a look at this first one here, I'm going to focus on the degrees of these. So the degree of the top is just going to be 1 because of that x. The degree of the bottom is going to be 2 because of the x squared, which means the bottom has a higher power, which means the bottom is going to be a larger value, which means when I plug a larger value into when the bottom blows up faster than the top, I'm going to get super, 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 super close to 0 because the bottom is going to be gigantic. So that's going to give me 0. Plus, I do the same thing here. Well, there is no x, so on top the degree is going to be 0. The bottom, the degree is going to be 2. Same idea. The degree of the bottom is larger, which means it's going to grow faster than the top is, so I'm going to get this gigantic number on the bottom of a fraction. Gigantic number on the bottom of a fraction means that this is going to get so tiny super fast. So I believe our limit is going to be zero for this. All right, next page. So on question number three, um, why don't you go ahead and pause now, separate it, take a look at the degrees, and then see if you can figure out what the limit is going to be. So I'm going to pause now and fill it all in. So I would recommend that you do the same. Okay, so I went ahead and split it apart. I took a look at the degrees of the top and the bottom. Notice on the first one I have an x cubed over an x, 
which means the numerator is going to grow much faster than the denominator. So the top of the fraction is going to get super big, which means I'm going to charge off to a gigantic number, which we're going to represent as infinity. Then the second one, I have a degree of 0 on the top and a degree of 1 on the bottom, which means the degree of the bottom is larger, so I'm going to have a larger number growing in the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to have a smaller number over a gigantic number, which is going to get super, super, super close to 0. So if I do infinity, this idea of a large number minus 0, I'm going to get infinity. So one of the things that we want to take into consideration here, previously when we said that a limit was going off to infinity, that was a reason why it didn't exist. So you're going to see this a couple of different ways. You can say that the limit is infinity, however, we can say, therefore, since the limit is infinity, the limit does not exist. Because again, it's still the same idea that it is charging off to, for a limit to exist, it's charging off to an exact numeric value. And remember, infinity is just an idea or a concept. So, number four, we want to do the same thing. We're going to do the limit as x approaches infinity of this. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to... Um, Normally, I would probably separate it, but I'm not going to separate it this time. So let's just see if we can go ahead and play with it a little bit. So let's put the limit as x approaches infinity of our function. Let's see if we can clean that up just a little bit. So... I know that my 5 and my, whoa, let's not get rid of those, that doesn't make any sense. I know that I have an x over an x, which means if I just take a look at these separately, that x and that x are going to grow basically at the same rate. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Is that supposed to be a 3? That is. My apologies. Let's turn that into a 3. And let's rewrite what we have. So we're using that whole dividing out technique which is fine, except that we did back a couple sections ago. So now I have 5 halves times this x minus 3. All right, well, remember, if you have a constant in there, you can actually just pull it out. So coefficient, I mean. We can pull that out and put it in front. x minus 3. All right, so I still have this 5 halves. And this is going to be times by whatever it is that I find inside. All right, so if I plug in infinity, I have a gigantic number, the largest number you could possibly imagine, and subtract 3 from it. Still a pretty gigantic number. So gigantic that we're just going to refer to it as infinity. And then 5 halves. 2 and a half of infinity is still infinity. Still have that idea of something that's gigantic. So here's another way that we could evaluate this algebraically. So if I go back up here, I would say that this is infinity. However, I can then say, therefore, the limit does not exist. Okay, our last two questions. Let's see if we can do this without actually separating stuff out. So I still want to do the limit as x approaches infinity of my f of x function. And really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare the degrees and see if I can figure out what's going to blow up or if they're going to blow up at the same rate. So it's all multiplied out, which is a little bit different than the previous problem. Since it's all multiplied out, we can just look at the highest exponent to determine what the degree is. So the top is going to be a cubed, and the bottom is going to be a fourth power. So I ask myself, well, which value is larger? Well x to the fourth is larger. That's in the denominator, which means the denominator is going to blow up faster than the top is going to blow up. If the denominator gets larger faster than the numerator does, then we are talking about this fraction becoming so tiny, because the denominator is big, that we're going to get super close to zero. So I would say that the limit as x approaches that is going to be zero. All right. Our last one, this one's a tiny bit different. Not a lot, but we now have degrees that actually match. So when we have degrees that match, 
when we talk about the numerator and the denominator growing at the same rate. So I have an x squared and an x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look. So we're going to assume that they're growing at the exact same rate. It's just that the top is going to be multiplied by negative 6. And the denominator is going to be multiplied by positive 3. So if they're growing at the exact same rate, all we have to do when the degrees match is just take a look at the leading coefficients. So I know that negative 6 over 3 is actually going to be negative 2. So it doesn't matter what idea or concept of infinity you're plugging in, like 5,000, 5 million, 500 million, whatever, you're still going to end up with those values kind of narrowing down to or simplifying down to this negative 6 over 3 because they're growing at the exact same rate, which means our limit is just going to be negative 2. So it's whatever those leading coefficients simplify down to.